And we are live. Hey, everybody. We have done this how many times? And we're having technical di difficulties today. <laughs> yeah, we had a, a few technical difficulties getting, uh, yeah, getting, but getting look at this that. going. We're, we're here, here on so, time and yeah. we're ready to roll. Happy Monday to you. Yes. And Hello, glad that you Monday. could be joining us today. And hopefully that you are finding our live content here um, as we're just getting started. We're Lou and Tammy Santini, by the way. Hello, I'm Lou. This is Tammy, just in case. Just in case you didn't know who was who. <laughs> So as you are arriving per usual, go ahead and say hello in the comments. Let us know where you are tuning in from so that we can properly greet you. We're excited to spend a little bit of time with you here today. Hello, Suli. Hey, Suli. Hey, Glad hello. that you are able to join us today. Hello, yeah. Christine. Hey, Christine. Hello. Oh, yeah. What she say? Oh, right. can you can send, you send me the, the link? link? So oh, are, are you're on live? So are we in are we we started a little late, Christine? So maybe you thought we weren't live. Hello, but... Danielle. Glad you hey, could Danielle. be here. Awesome. Okay, I think she meant the um the stream yard, the permissions for stream yard. Yes, we yes, can, we yep, we, we see can you. see you. Yes, as you're tuning in, go ahead and let us know where you're tuning in from so that we can say hello to you and see I hope how Christine... things are going. Christine, I hope you won your contest. I thought a couple weeks ago you were going for some kind of recognition. Yeah, is that still so going? Does how's that, that end going? or how, how'd you do there? All right, so Christine's tuning in from Long Island. Hello, Christy Maria tuning right. in from New Jersey. Hey, Christy, hello. We have somebody tuning in from Philadelphia. Glad that right. you could be here. Again, the city of brother, brotherly, the city of brotherly love. Unless you are not an Eagles fan, then do not go to Philadelphia. But that's right. We're hosting the Super Bowl at our house yes. on Sunday. So that'll be exciting. Chiefs versus Eagles. Don't know who I'm going to be tuning or who I'm going to be cheering for. But usually yeah. I'm just more um I'm more interested in the best commercial and the um halftime show. Who is with me on that? Best commercial. A lot of people are halftime like halftime show. Those yeah. are like my yeah. Important and things for Super Bowl. Christine Earl says <laughs> Christine Earl says her recognition competition is still going on. All right. We've got Sandra tuning in from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Wow, that is a cool name. First of all, that is a, it's a cool Christine, name. Christine, yay. I'm so excited for you. Just signed a Dreams on Destination wedding. Oh my gosh. For in April 2024 for 40 rooms. Woo! That is fabulous. Holla. Good put job, that, hey, girl. Christine, put that in the uh do me a favor, put that in the Facebook group, please. The 20K Basic Group. That is a great testimony and a great you earned it. You've worked so hard at at increasing destination weddings. You've been a hard worker. You came to the 20K retreat. You you spend the money, you invest your time, and now you're reaping results. Good That's job. right. That's, That's right. one of many to come. And Danielle is interested, it likes the halftime show. She loves Rihanna. Okay. Hello, Denise. Glad that you are here. Hey, Denise, Happy hello. afternoon to whoever said that. We are glad you're here with us as well. All right, so we have some great information we want to go over today. So before we do that, you know the use. We love doing our $5 Starbucks gift card game. Yes. Hello, Annette. Hello, glad hey, you are here today. Hello. Sorry, everybody. Hello, that the, everyone. The signal that we were live came out late because we were usually we have the countdown we had a little, timer. We had a little tech yeah. difficulty. Little tech difficulty. We lost our entire presentation. And so it took us right up to the time we started to get it back. So we, but we got it back. But hello, everyone. And um, Denise, double check your email for me uh, real quick, too. So, all right. So, our game question today when um, we're done, when we're done, I'm going to write it in because we didn't even have time. Because again, like we said, we had the technical difficulties. Okay. All right, so I've got that. All right, so we're going to do our $5 Starbucks gift card game. All right. So get your fingers ready. Get your fingers go. ready for $5 Starbucks gift card game. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins this, just simply message me your cell phone number, and then I will text you. And you just do, that in just do that in Facebook Messenger. Right. Okay, so here's the game question. Are you ready? Right. What Caribbean island am I thinking of? Name oh, the Caribbean right. island that I am thinking of. Right. Ready? Set, go. Go ahead and start guessing right. what, Caribbean what Caribbean island Tammy is thinking of. And hey, hello, Nicole. 
We got, yes, hello, Nicole. Glad oh, you're tuning in. She said Barbados. So right. we have Aruba, St. Lucia, Barbados, Good. Antigua. I don't even know the answer, guys. Tammy made it all up. St. Lucia, St. Martin, St. Martin. St. Lucia, I love St. Saint Lucia. St. Caicos, St. Saint Marti Saint Martin. Yeah. All right. Not the one yet? No. Nope. Okay. Keep going. Keep thinking of more Caribbean islands. This Caribbean is the island. Dominica. Ooh, Dominica Saint is always Pitts, good. Curacao. Pitts. Curacao. I love Syracuse. Hey, Natasha. A lot of good guesses. Keep it coming. Ooh, Costa Bahamas. Rica, Bahamas. All oh, right. And Costa, I love Costa Rica. You know, what's interesting is um, a lot of people forget about the Bahamas, but Bahamas have some really beautiful, some of the best beaches yes. um, still in the Caribbean. Jamaica, Bonaire, Belize, Puerto Ooh, Bonaire. Rico, St. Croix. That was a good guess, Bonaire. Nothing yet? Grenada, no. Oh, my goodness. All right. Barbados, keep it coming. Keep it coming, guys. Antigua. All right. And then, all right, Barbados, Antigua. Let's see. Nicole, oh, Hawaii. Hawaii. All right. Although Hawaii Barbuda. technically would be a Pacific. Uh, right. Pacific so Caribbean island. island, Dominican, Cuba. Oh, Cuba's a good one. I wouldn't have thought of that. Good job. So Kit. Is that it? No. Ah, oh, man. Man, Tammy made this hard, guys. I don't know what. I feel like we've named almost all the Caribbean islands. But there's... Oh, you'd think. But there's actually several that haven't been named yet. Right. Well, Bermuda. that's true. All right. Yeah, Bermuda is always a Bermuda is always an interesting one to me because I feel like it is not really in the Caribbean Sea, but somehow Barbados. Lots of people guess beautiful. Barbados, Grenada. Oh, Grenada, Natasha. Nevis. No. Nope. Oh, Nevis. Christine Earl's coming in with a very unique Caribbean, but not not Nevis. No. Wow. Man, guys. Virgin still... Islands, Saint Vincent. Oh. That's a good one. Those are good. Yeah. Good job. Turks. St. Vincent. Oh, yeah. Turks and Kate. Love Turks. Turks. Hey, Lori. Hey, Lori. St. Bart's. <clears throat> Man. Trinidad. Oh, Trinidad's a good one. Mm -hmm. I remember you guys, our church years ago, went on a mission trip to Trinidad. Now, this was a long time ago. Long. And one of the persons said they went to grab some fruit and they bit into it and there were worms all inside the fruit. I know. Anyway. Not, not the best story of Trinidad, but it's beautiful. Uh, Dallas, who <laughs> said Dallas for a, for a Caribbean island? Okay, well, maybe there is an island. Uh, that is there a Dallas that's a Caribbean like island? Suli got it. <laughs> oh, Anguilla. Anguilla. All right, Suli. Good job, Anguilla. Anguilla. All right. Suli, I think you won last and week, I'm too. And I'm surprised that nobody said Cayman Islands. I don't think I saw that one. Oh, yeah. I don't think I saw British British Virgin Islands on the, uh, nobody said that. Yeah. There was a few that I, uh, so I was surprised that. Um, well, that's But true. yeah, there we go. Congratulations, Celine. Good good job, everybody that participated. Yes. Good job. Thanks for being here. And yes, we're looking, we're talking about fun, sunny places. Might as well, yeah. uh, you know, talk about some Caribbean islands. So I'm looking at Anguilla for a destination for two people right now. Because oh. as a travel professional, of course, I'm still helping people. So one right. for a honeymoon okay. and um, one for a family vacation, for a luxury family vacation. So wow. anyway, so that island destination was on my mind this yeah. morning or this afternoon. And Sully, you're right. Two in a row. Good job. You're on a winning streak. Plus you booked, I think you said you booked four destination weddings or maybe last week you said you booked two, but you're on a roll with destination weddings too. And now Christine Earls, I'm so happy for all of our 20K members that are Booking your weddings. That's what that is what is supposed to happen. Good job. All right. So let's go ahead and roll into our content for today. Five types of content you should be using consistently to grow your travel leads right. and bookings. So um, this might be some people may have been like, oh, I've heard this before. This is totally we haven't talked about this in a while. Mm -hmm. So this is this should be new to all of you. And get I think it's going to be. Paper. Yeah. Get your pens and paper ready. This is going to be. Um, very, um, and I'm not sure why it says hub content, but I think this is like, we're just stop, starting to talk about hub content again, just reminding no. people. Um, well, so we know we've talked about that, right? The wheel of content where you have your hub, your main big juicy piece that's longer. Your spoke content is your shorter pieces. You, you take your hub content and break it into pieces. And that's mm -hmm. your spoke content on social media, Pinterest, all that. But Today, we're going to talk about the types mm -hmm. of no matter what platform you're using, whether it's Hub or Spoke, or we're going to talk about the type of topics that you're going to want to throw out there. Obviously, you want them to be bridal friendly, but you should be mixing this type of content, these five different types of content, no matter what type of 
wedding topic they're on, you should do your best to mix up this content, cycle it through, because mm -hmm. this is a great way to grow your leads and your tr your likes, followers, and shares, all that. You want to have a mix of different types of content. So right. here's, we're going to talk about Here it. Here we go. So number one. Type number one, informational yes. content. Informational content. So the first type of content you should be using regularly is content that gives information about you know, I resorts gives information about wedding topics, gives information about um, packing wedding packages, honeymoon packages, honeymoon resort. There, there's believe me, you you can never not get enough information. And I, I know there's a lot out there, but there's so much out there that people, if they start following you, they just want you to give it to them. Right. People people wanted it to be given to them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to search for it. Right. That's the whole idea of some of your content strategies. When they can find your content. And you're giving them informational pieces from you. They're just happy mm -hmm. to have it. They just, if you're going to keep feeding it to them and it's meeting their needs, they're going to keep, they're going to keep eating it. And you want them to eat from your table, right? not from someone else's table. So, That's right. So here's some um, examples of how you can, I guess, deliver that type of content. Yes. So you can do FAQs, right? Frequently asked questions about destination wedding packages. You can give success stories about couples that you've helped in the past or, mm -hmm. or even listen, you don't always have to use your own couple. You can use like a real destination wedding or honeymoon story you've heard that might be a famous person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't copy the article that was written about them, but you can talk about what you read about, oh, maybe you didn't hear that Brad and Angelina, I'm just making these up. Brad and Angelina Jolie had an amazing destination wedding in St. Kitts and it was beautiful. And maybe you've thought about St. Kitts for, so you don't have to have your own couples all the time. Right. It's great if you can have your own couples, but sometimes you can get celebrity couples right. or couples you've heard of and highlight them. Mm -hmm. um, also wedding trends. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that's something that we're highlighting in February's content hero are the top destination wedding and honeymoon trends of 2023. Right. So trends are something that are informative, mm -hmm. a free report, of course, right? Like your lead magnets, all that stuff, or a blog post that is a piece of your lead magnet could lead people back to your lead magnet. So that's what we mean by informational. Right. Tips, hacks, that yeah. sort of thing. Those type of things. Inspirational is right. another type of content that you should be um, right. talking about and using in your content strategy. Yes. Wedding couples, they want something that motivates them, right? Absolutely. Right. They want to be motivated. Sometimes we just want to be motivated. We want to be inspired. So it's okay to not always give a bunch of information, sometimes giving um, more inspiration. And that's something actually that I am, I'm, one, I'm working on with Content Hero is to make these have more of a blend of these type of things in our in our stuff so the types of things that you can share when it comes to inspirational content right. and the ways that you can share you can talk about design right, right. you can share success stories quotes yeah. or st sayings like we have to remember the mindset of our ideal client the bride and the groom and how busy they are and how overwhelmed they might be so if we can inspire right. them to, um, you know, with motivational quotes or sayings, you know, that's always going to be right. helpful as well. Memes, facts, anything that's just like a uh, easily digestible form of inspiration. Right. So these are, that's what I'm saying is don't always be informative. Sometimes be inspirational. And Instagram also, when they've done the research, Instagram and Pinterest both are great platforms for inspirational content, content right. that inspires people to, oh my gosh, look at that wedding design. Wow, mm -hmm. that inspires me to want to do that myself. Right. Or, oh man, I've read this post on this great wedding that they had. Oh, I can have a wedding like that too. That's inspirational. Even a quote, you know, you may be struggling today. Something like, you know, you may be, it may, may be hard today, but tomorrow is a new day and you'll figure it out. The you know, sun will come out right. tomorrow. Something like that. <laughs> you have such a good voice. Um, but thanks. Honey. Something, something like that. You know, people are stuck. Sometimes just a human inspirational quote is all someone That's needs right. to endear them to you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just we're trying to cycle through, break down our content so that we are not always doing one thing all the time. Right, right. All right. So the third type of content is entertaining. Yes, entertaining content. Now, some people are really good at this because they're just naturally super funny or whatever. So you don't right. always want to go to that that's right. part of entertaining. It doesn't Th this have does to not be mean funny. you have to do a song and dance, right. like a TikTok dance or an Instagram dance or a reels. You don't have to do that. Entertaining can be anything, a funny little meme. It could be, matter of fact, I think I might have, if I don't, I'll give examples. Let's see. But, you know, when sometimes when these wedding couples are under stress, 
of planning their wedding or honeymoon. Right. Sometimes they just want a little entertainment. Right. And if it's coming from you, that really endears them to you, mm -hmm. makes you a little more human and makes them feel like, ah, oh, this is funny. I like this person. This person, you know, if they like some of your entertaining things you throw out there. So you could do memes. You could do, uh, and I might have that. Let's see. I might even have, I do have, all right. So here's some ideas for memes. You can do challenges. Contest is a contest is considering entertainment. Um, giveaways. You, know, you don't think of those as entertainment, but they are. Challenges, contests, giveaways, memes, stories, all of that stuff um, is considered entertainment. Right. So it doesn't always have to be, I'm dancing, I'm changing clothes, I'm changing outfits in a blink of an eye, right? You don't, you don't always have to do all that stuff. Um, you can run like a contest for wedding couples if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, you could run giveaways where you give away, I don't know, um, I feel bad because all of you do different things. But um, and I don't want you have to spend tons of money, right? You don't want to spend too much money on a giveaway. Otherwise, then it's you could do other things with your money. If it's you not know, your favorite you travel, um, you know, gear or whatever is kind of a, a good giveaway. There you I go. Think, you know? wow. Something that absolutely or even. Yeah, I agree. Something that would be a destination wedding, I suppose. Could you do a destination wedding veil? Something that's made for a destination no. wedding? No, you couldn't do that. People so. want their own veils. Though. Okay, they want their own veils. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> but those are ideas. And of course, you can share funny things, video clips. Right. You know, do you want your wedding? Does it feel like your wedding's going to be like this? And you show like a video clip of a car driving off a cliff or something, right? And that's so entertaining. So, like, we have two of our daughters. They're, you know, well, one just turned 30. And the other one we just is, had her birthday this is 25 and they do a lot of things where they just follow people on TikTok or whatever. And they just share yeah. the things that they think are hilarious because it just meshes with their personality and they just are. So they share it in their stories, but I find myself really enjoying those and it's really entertaining. And our one daughter who's 25 said she gets a lot of people to follow her just because she follows funny people and shares funny things. And so sometimes yeah. break it up with sharing something. Like if you yourself are not like super funny, but you think right. somebody else is just hilarious. You can share some of their it's stuff. It's good to share that every once in a while, because then you, it also shows your sense of humor, it, it, you know, as well as like, if you think it's right. funny and then anyway, it's one way to show your personality. We mm -hmm. always tell you wedding couples buy from people. Mm -hmm. They they don't usually want to buy from a business. They want to buy from a person they connect with. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, entertaining types of things help people connect with you, right. which is going to lead, which is getting close to another point we're going to have. Right. Okay. So another type of content is more conversational types of content. Yeah, more comfort, conversational. So we want to spur on conversations with these couples and yes. we want them to comment. We want them to like, we want them to be, you know, able to, to have some sort of response, right? and give you yeah. a reply or send you a DM, some, something that sparks that conversation. Yes. Um, and I think the next one may have, there we go. So you can do this in many ways, right? You could you could show a, a post of a wedding design and be like, this, is this you? Yes or no in the comments. Does this feel like you or not? That's one way to get conversational with people. Mm -hmm. um, or just, what do you think about this? Who likes this? You know, you could do a poll. Anything that, that really conversation builds engagement. Right. So when you are throwing in a conversational piece of content, try at least once a week mm -hmm. in your social platforms. Like this is really good spoke conversational content. This is more spoke content right. that leads back to your hub. But your hub could be, let's say you have a blog post or a video on your YouTube channel about or a podcast, whatever your hub content is going to be. Let's say you have one, um, the five best destination wedding resorts, um, you know, in the world, let's just say. But then one of your conversation starter posts could be, you know, why do you prefer overwater bungalow in Fiji or do you prefer, you know, laying on the beach in the Bahamas? You could do something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they would give you their cut. That would start a conversation. Right. If you're sending out an email, you could always say something in an email like, hey, hit reply and let me know if this sounds like if you would like to hear more about this, like whatever topic you're ready for or. Mm -hmm. Um, let me know what you thought about this. Some people won't do that, but you right. want to make it easy for them. Right. But you know, if your emails saying, you know, check out my blog on the five best destination resorts in the world, mm -hmm. you could hit back, you know, Hey, by the way, if you've ever, if you are still planning on doing a destination wedding and you know, if you're still planning your destination wedding, just hit reply and say, yes, I'm still dealing with it. You know what I mean? You can do all kinds of things to get people to converse with you either in your email socially social is the quickest easiest way 
having posts that ask some questions either in the post or in your captions. Um, those are the easiest way, but you can do it with email too. Right. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So then oh, wait, the fifth... go back to that real quick because we didn't talk about which one. So we can all see. So you could even ask about wedding setups, right? Like, right. do you like this wedding setup? Is this your color? What's your favorite wedding setup? Facts. Did you know this? You know, give them a fact and say, did you know this? Yes or no? I didn't. I just learned this today. Is this the first time you're hearing this? Right. You could put a myth in there. That, uh, like, here's a myth, like the five myths about a destination wedding that you thought were true. Right. And then you give them a myth. The myth is that you have to always get legally married, you know, in debt. Now, most people know you don't have to, but I'm just saying the idea of a myth would be mm -hmm. uh, the myth is that you always have to get legally married in Mexico. Well, that's a myth. That is not a fact. The fact is you can have a state said wedding and still have a get married in Mexico, but it's going to be a vow renewal, right. but no one has to know, right? Then you're showing your expertise beliefs. You know, do you believe, um, yeah, go back to that again. Um, you can throw a belief out there. Like, this is something I really believe. What do you believe this too? Right. Revelation. Hey, my mind was blown. Oh my gosh. I just realized today for the first time, boom. Did you realize this too? You know, are you surprised by this? So, so there's so many ways of doing conversational. It's, it's pretty fun. Actually, it gets pretty fun. It can be entertaining too. Right. I was just going to say that the conversational can also be entertaining. Yeah, they can. You know, people want to, and want to engage. So conversational and entertainment can both be very engaging. And that's yeah. really what you want. You want people to be able to interact with you, feel comfortable interacting with you, feel like they know you a little bit, like yeah. they're easy to, you know, kind of josh around with or whatever it might be. Right. And then the fifth type of content is connectional. Can I be, uh, this content. is content that helps you connect with your wedding couple mm -hmm. better on an intimate level. So you want to be able to naturally flow from building that conversation using your content. Right. Um, so that builds connections with your wedding couples. Yes. Yeah. And one so way to do that. Some examples would be. Right here. So a behind the scenes look, maybe sometimes people like I've read this many times in all industries, people like seeing behind the scenes of your life right. and of your business. Now, you don't want to show them behind the scenes. You know, you're killing your kids because they're driving <laughs> you crazy. That might be a little much. They don't want to they don't want to go know you that well, but they might want to know that. Oh, my gosh, I love getting my Starbucks every single day, but I'm getting tired of the line I wait in. You know, I don't know about you guys. Let me know. Are you waiting in line at Starbucks every day? Right. You're mixing connection with, with conversation. Right. Um, you could do a success story. Oh my gosh, guys, I had trouble. I've been trying to lose it. It can, you know, wedding couples, bridal, wedding, brides, especially always trying to lose weight for mm -hmm. the wedding, for the wedding. Right. So you could even share a weight success or failure story. Mm -hmm. Hey, I've been trying to lose 10 pounds. I told myself at the first of the year and guess what guys, I did it. I've been exercising cons consistently. I'm eating better. Guys, you can do it. I did it. You can do it. Like you can do That's also inspirational. Right. See, a lot of these will blend into each other, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing, right? You can give them a personal update like that. Same with your, that's a, that was an idea of a personal update, but you could also give them an update. Hey guys, my office. Oh my gosh, guys, my business has been just growing and I had to get a bigger office. I just want to show you around real quick. That, that kind Re, of stuff. Yeah, remodeled or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So any of that, any of those kinds of things build connection with, I have what, cu couple's opinion. Oh, yeah. Couple's I, opinion. You could even mm -hmm. share it right. Hey, I had this couple I just dealt with their day and they really feel this way. And, you know, I thought about it. I wonder how many other people feel this way. Do you, do you guys feel this way too? So a lot of these last three kind of layer each other. Right. Conversational, connection, and entertainment. They mm -hmm. all can be layered. On top, one post could do all three. That's what the beauty of this whole thing is. Mm -hmm. So, okay. No, and don't, then, don't, you don't show that one. Okay. So, okay. do we have any questions? Does anybody have any questions about what we talked about today? While you're putting the questions in, I'm going to go ahead and share again for those of you who maybe came in late the five types of content you should be using consistently to grow your travel leads and bookings. Yeah, let's review informational content. Yes. Inspirational content. Yep. Entertaining content. You don't. And again, watch that. Watch what we talk about. You do not. That doesn't mean you have to do these song and dance changes. and whatnot. Song and dance. There's Conversational. Yeah. Use your personality when it comes to don't do anything that's not outside your personality. Conversational right. content and connectional content. So right. has anybody been using a specific one of these types of content 
that's been working really well for you, go ahead and share it. Otherwise, if you have questions um, also about um, about the uh, the content that we shared today with you, go ahead and put those in. Yeah. Um, you can go ahead and comment those. So, and hey, Jessica, hello. Haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Good to see you, Jessica. I hope things are going well for you. So Christine said that I can sing for the posts. <laughs> You could. Yes, you you I could. Always, I always have a song in my heart. Everything literally can be a song, in my opinion. It like either the lyric or something just reminds me of a song or whatever. I don't know. That's just how I roll. Yeah. All right. So how do you stay consistent with posting content? You know, I think, Jessica, one thing is that you have to, I think if you have content at your disposal, whether you made it, are you hire someone to make it for you or you're like in our content hero program or whatever you use, you have to have content at your disposal so that you can post it. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to think of it and create it yourself, it's very hard to be consistent with that unless you have this huge time piece of time on your hand that you can front load it all. So usually you want to have some content at your disposal to post it. Now in content hero, uh, we put a content calendar in there to also say, okay, post on this day that post that day and that post to keep help people stay consistent. But I understand if you don't have it at your disposal, however you do it, it doesn't have to be our program. It can be anybody's program. It's easier to be consistent when you already have it and you just can quickly put it out there than if you have to create it all yourself. Right. And I think too, that um, when it comes to consistently creating content, um, I think we overthink it True. and we have to remember that people are not going to remember every single thing that you've talked about in the past. You literally can recycle <clears throat> some things that you've done before. That is true. No one's going to know. You could recycle it, maybe change the photo, say it a little bit differently. Yeah, true. I, in the past, what I've done is I've gone through my Instagram and I will, because you can check to see what content you created that is going to, that gave you the greatest reach. So look over like, let's say the past um, year and see which content you created that yeah. got you the greatest reach and this try really to try to come up with the same concept again, and maybe just a couple tweaks or don't change it at all. Nobody's yeah. going to know or remember. Sometimes you can just repost the same thing if it's been six months. So yeah, look at all. Yeah, Suli, that's a great way. Look at some of the, or not Suli. I'm sorry, Suli. Jessica. Jessica, mm -hmm. look at the, I, your names are like on top of each great. other yeah. in our feed. But um, Jessica, but I caught it. I'm sorry, I caught it. Jessica, um, think about any content you've done maybe six months ago. A year ago, if it's relevant, post it again. And I think you too, know? the second way to be, to do consistently is to have that, what Lou is called, Lou calls that hub content, that core piece of content, yeah. whether it's one blog post, two blog posts, or um, a going live and you've got a, you know, a bunch of different things that you're talking about. You keep breaking it down. This is what we do Yeah. every single week. We create, we write a blog post. We create social posts that have to go, that lead people to that blog post. We go right. live talking about the same content you know, we share yeah. stories or whatever, talking about the same content. So we have like this foundational thing of what we're going to be talking <clears throat> about. And that helps us stay consistent too, because yeah. if you, if you don't do that, it is hard to come up with things. But if you have like this main um, five tips for right. blah, blah, blah. And then literally you can share one of those tips Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? right? Like break it down throughout the week. You've got your main piece of content that shares all five tips your blog right. post, for example, and then on your social post, you're just breaking it down one tip at a time. Right. Talking one tip about a day. Them, even. Right. Talking about them on your social post, talking about them in your stories. And I think that helps. I think. Yeah. So really your mind. hub content's like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> I, I used to tell my kids, you can, if, when they were in college, I'm like, buy a rotisserie chicken. You can live off it for a week. Right. So a big, juicy, delicious rotisserie blog post. I mean, uh, a blog post. <laughs> you can ease. You can eat off that thing, man. You can make chicken soup out of it. You can have a nice dinner. You could fry it, make stir fry, right? You can use that thing till there's nothing but bones left. Right. And um, make I your say own, that, yeah, make your own broth, just freeze made, it. You can do all kinds of things with it. Yeah. Now this is not a cooking show. We, 
But I'm just <laughs> saying, though, that because I just made stir fry out of a leftover rotisserie chicken. But a rotisserie chicken, you can do so much with. And same with a juicy blog post. You can milk that thing and do different pieces of it and put it all out there and keep living off one blog post. You can get two weeks out of one blog post if you did it right. And then, um, so Lily wants you to go over the spoke um, content thing again. Oh, I will. Um, so maybe right. I can pull that up um, sure, maybe so we can, can share that photo. Julie. But So let's go to Suli real quick, and then right. I'll find that um, image for, um, for Lily. So can you read that? Sure. Okay. All right. Suli says, nope, I can't nope, read it you now. can't read it because <laughs> I just... I just all right. Demolish that. Okay. Here we go. We go. Should we focus for should we focus our content only on Death Station Winning Honeymoon? Should we mix in other things? For example, travel agent. I'm always wanting to promote other types of travel, not not revolving the not re, not revolving around those things. I know what she's trying to say. So Celine, here's how here's how I would answer that question. Whatever you want the most of, because in our 2020K program, which you're a part of, we obviously want you to be known as the guru, a guru of destination weddings and honeymoons. And obviously from those, you're going to get people that are going to contact you and be like, hey, I was at a wedding you booked a year ago. Do you do travel? Do you do birthday trips? Do you do, uh, you know, um, bow renewals? Do you do family trips? You're going to get that naturally to me. But the weddings and honeymoons are such big money makers. To me, I would focus more on that type of content. But once in a while, you could, of course, post, um, hey, guys, normally I talk about honeymoons and weddings, but oh, my gosh, I just this, this new resort or Sandals Curacao. I'm just making this up. that just opened up. Holy cow, what a beautiful resort. You know, you may already be married, but you might be somebody that follows me that um, you may want to do a vow renewal or you might want to do a family trip or just an anniversary trip. Mm -hmm. I just had to let you know about this. This is amazing because anniversary trips, vow renewals, those are very tightly connected to your weddings and honeymoons. So I think if you're going to splinter off, you could splinter off once in a while with a anniversary trip, reconnect your, reignite your love. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Go, I mean, you wouldn't do that. You're pretty close to Valentine's Day, but you know what I'm saying? Beginning of January, hey, thought about doing a Valentine's trip in Jamaica. It's okay to do that kind of stuff, but I would keep your core for weddings and honeymoons, if that's the audience you really want to go after, or keep the core there, and then you can splinter off here and there. But as the years go on, you could eventually, you know, you could send out an email to all your people about family trips, about hey, I do more than just weddings and honeymoons, and, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. we did notice that unless you told people that you did something else, a lot of people didn't come to us all the time for other things. But that's yeah, yeah, that's they it. didn't know. Mm -hmm. So let people know, you know, in a year from now. Hey, hope you had a great time. You traveled on your wedding with me and went to that wedding. But just want to let you know, I also provide family trips and, you know, amazing uh, vow renewals, that, that kind of stuff. That's All the right. best way I can answer it. So going over the spoke thing, and here's how it works. Lou, yeah. take it away. Bicycle wheel of content. Yes, the bicycle wheel of content, which I love, which, and I just want everyone to know, we're going to be reviewing this in our content jumps. I am working on the content jump start. I know I say that every single week, but I'm so picky. But I've got my first two video lessons uh, just about done. There's six video lessons in it. It's going to be a quick mini course. It'll be name and email to get it. Um, and six short, quick videos to, that goes through all this stuff again uh, with some visuals and nice things. That's why it's taking me so long because I want the videos to look nice. But anyway, basically your hub, it's like a bicycle wheel. Lily, the hub, the spoke is going to be that big, juicy rotisserie chicken piece of content <laughs> that you can break pieces off and use over and over again. Your blog post, your big, longer video, um, it gives your you, podcast. It's more of that foundational piece yeah. of content that has longevity. Right. Right. So like when you bigger. think about like social media, social media is something that we do consistently. And each week we're posting something new and we're sharing new things, but a blog yeah. post or a YouTube video on a specific topic is going to last on YouTube. And it's going to last on your blog post as, on your blog, as long as your blog is in right. existence. And literally yeah. three years from now, somebody can find that blog and read it right. and get help from it. But so, the spokes, the key is a lot. Some people won't find your hub. And so in order to reach the people, the people are on the rim of the tire. Mm -hmm. That's where all these wedding couples are out there searching, searching, searching for online or in their social profiles, living life, looking for help, or just talking about their wedding or just living life. You know, Facebook's about living life and searching for help. But then what you have is the spokes are different. Your social posts, your pin pins, 
from Pinterest, your little YouTube shorts, your TikToks, the spoke are the little pieces of content that you get out of your hub and they go out and, and they kind of uh, radiate out to where the couples are at. Right. So a couple is on Facebook and all of a sudden they see one of your posts. If they're one of your friends, I know they have to be your friend or they're on Instagram and they see one of your posts or they're following a hashtag um, that your post is pulling up for. They'll see your post on Instagram and then that will lead them to your blog post, to the hub, all right? Or they'll DM you maybe, and that leads them to your hub. Mm -hmm. And so the spokes are these smaller, short pieces of content that come out of your big piece that are radiating out to the world for these couples to find them all. Right. So that, that's what the spoke content is. And that's usually social media, short videos, uh, TikToks, pins, that kind of stuff. Okay. And then, um, all right, uh, Christine, it was great to see you today. Sorry. Yeah, we went, we went over today. And then, uh, she's wondering how much is too much probably in term, uh, terms of creating content. Oh, how much is too much? Well, or, or I think what she's saying is, so here's what I do. Um, was that, was that Suli? Mm -hmm. Suli, what we, what I would say to do is I would do at least three destination wedding and honeymoon posts a week or four and one of outside of destination wedding honeymoons that's how i would do it right now i do like four of the one and then one or a four to one ratio we'll just say it that way so you could do four you could do four post post you could do four posts a day but still have one be something else so like however you want to do your four i think it should be a four to one ratio right now as you're trying to build your guruness of per day no i she no all right what i'm saying i'm like finally catching no. up with <laughs> <laughs> what what I'm saying is that she was switching screens on it. What I'm trying to say is that no matter how you do it, whether it's once a day for a week, whether it's four times or five times a day, whether it's 15 times a week, just do a four to one ratio. Okay. Four times wedding honeymoon, one time something else. That's what I think right. you should do. And somebody had to, you know, leading into that, this question here, should you have two separate Instagram pages? Um, for the honeymoons, destination weddings, as well as family trips. I wouldn't. Yeah, we've had that question a lot. I think lot. It'd be, I, it's just too much to yeah. try to build. Like I wouldn't do that. I would because you're going to be building an audience mm -hmm. of these wedding couples that, um, and as they hire you and things like that, they may just stay on your Instagram page. And eventually you can put those, like I told Julie, just put some other posts up there about regular travel once in a while. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what you want to be known for is what you want your main thing to look like. But then it's okay to post. People get it. They know that you can do travel. They know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you probably do other things. That That's not going to drive people. What people don't want is someone whose profile looks like you're a hodgepodge of all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you start losing your expertise status. Right. Right. Then it's like, okay, like think of your auto mechanic, right? If you wanted to go to, um, if I needed, I'm trying, if I, my transmission, if my transmission needs to be fixed, or if I want new tires. I'm usually going to go to the tire specialist people in my town that I trust or mm -hmm. discount tire someplace that says tire in the name, mm -hmm. right? Or transmissions, LTD. Unless I had an auto mechanic that I just trusted with my life, with everything, mm -hmm. usually people want to go to a specialist, right? You right. don't go to a general practice doctor if you need open heart surgery. Right. That's the idea. You don't want to look like you're everything to everybody because then you're nothing to nobody. Right. That's the idea. Exactly. I hope I explained that okay. And then also, you know, if you did feel like your audience on Instagram or whatever um, needed a little bit more in-depth something from you, then create like a Facebook group just for a specific topic. Yeah. You know, that type of thing is, is also an option you could do. Denise is asking, if I post five things on social media, would I lead back to my blog at the end of each post? I would say um, you don't have to lead back to the blog at the end of every single post, but you do want to have some sort of call to action. So the call to action could yeah. be, you know, especially if the content you're sharing relates significantly, you know, relates exactly to what your blog post is all about. Right. Send them there for the rest of the info. Um, but you also want to, you know, tr uh, trickle in some of your, you know, op opt-ins for your lead magnet, right? I have a great free report called blah, blah, blah. You can grab, yeah. you know, link in bio um, or here's the link to, you know, to get that. Like you want to make sure that you are regularly talking about your lead magnet and in your posts and in your stories. So probably at least once a week for both, you want to have a, that call to action for somebody to opt in. Mm -hmm for your lead magnet and then other 
Other um, calls to action could be more of um, like, what do you think? Or, um, you know, would you do this? Uh, yes or no, true or false, like um, anything that just gets a, the comment and the interaction and the um, conversation going is also good. You don't always. Yeah. So Denise, to... so this might help everybody. So Denise, if you had five posts on social media, uh, I would have maybe um, at least two of them go back to your blog post for sure. Mm -hmm. One, one could be just like, hey, let me know what you think. Just conversational. Right. Did you know that? And then you could have, and then you could have one that even DM me mm -hmm. if you are interested in something, right? You could do even a more stronger call to action. Like, Hey, if you're struggling and would like to meet with, uh, need some help and want to talk to somebody, DM me and let me know. And then you could directly send them a link to your content, to your consultation page. Right. So, uh, the perfect thing would be if you had seven posts, then I would do at least three to the blog, back to the blog post, two conversational and one to the, um, to your consultation. That's how I would do it because you don't want to consultation is getting closer to salesy and people. So usually there's an 80, and then 20 one to your lead magnet. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. The, yes. Yeah. Uh, you could do right three year blog, but remember your lead magnet should be on your website mm -hmm. and your, the end of your blog post can go to your lead magnet. So that's why you don't always have to lead everybody to, you know, you can lead three times to your blog post, but eventually that'll get them to your lead magnet too because you always refer your lead magnet from your, from your blog post or a consultation. You want to give everybody the option because everyone's in a different spot. Mm -hmm. So not everybody wants a lead magnet. Some people are ready to just book a consultation with you and some people aren't ready. So they want the lead magnet. So give them right. both at the end of your blog post. Okay. So and thank you for Jessica. She said, I think I gave her a sermon on that. Uh, <laughs> No problem. We're in the content church today. There, that's right. Okay. So a couple of announcements while we have you guys here. Okay. One, if you're part of our 20K system and toolkit destination wedding business course, we have our Q&A tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Live Q&A for two, all the 20K two, members. For the 20K system and toolkit members at yep. two o'clock. Um, so submit your questions. The information's in the private Facebook group for yep. you to submit your questions in advance. And then Lou and I will join you live to answer those questions. Yep. Um, the other thing is if you're part of our content hero, um, we have our live coaching for that on Wednesday. Yes. At 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. Eastern. So come if you have questions or just want to hang out with us for content hero because we go into more in-depth stuff and that um, using your content. Information for that will also be in the content hero private Facebook group as well right. as we'll, you'll receive an email for that. Right. Remind that. And if you haven't, if you aren't a part of content hero yet, we give done for you wedding and honeymoon content every month, mm -hmm. uh, a honeymoon blog, honeymoon hub piece. And it does say shorting hub piece. And I want you to know one thing I'm going to be doing with Content Hero. Tammy, everyone's heard of here first. Where's Angela? Angela loves it when I just start saying stuff because I, you might get something free out of me. But, and I'm always just over here shaking my head. Right. <laughs> but I'm I'm going to be with this latest research because I'm always doing research. I'm always trying to improve and make things better, which does drive our team crazy at times. But um, one thing I want to do is try to incorporate more of those five types of content in our content and content hero so that you have a little bit more. I can't personal experiences, that kind of stuff. I can't create for you. Right. 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 And you should be able to look at your content and think of ways that you can make something yes. conversational. So, you know, I, certain things I can't do for you because it comes out of your own, your own flow, mm -hmm. but I'm going to try my best to give you some more inspiration for that kind of stuff. And content hero coming up so we're working on making things even better with content hero i mean i think it's pretty good pretty now yes. heard great things about it but i want to continue to get these more well-rounded content pieces for you mm -hmm. and splint and spoke content so that you can you know have these cycle cycle through this a little easier so right. we're gonna we're working on heading in that direction so all right awesome well thanks everyone for being here today we appreciate it Hope you have an awesome rest of your week and yeah. we'll see you soon. Well, we'll see all of our 20K people tomorrow. Please come everybody that's on here or that watches it later. And if you are watching it later, you can put in hashtag replay and also on our Content Hero Coaching Call Wednesday. We'll see you there for that. Oh, you got a comment real quick. Okay. All right. Lori said thank oh, you. Hey, Lori. You're most welcome. You're welcome. And good, Sule. I'm glad I answered that. And uh, great to see all of you guys. Uh, I always love seeing you guys. It's great to hang out with you on a Monday. and. Uh, well, have a good week. All right. See ya.